This is your full 2024 NFL first round, all 32 teams mock draft. There will not be any trades going on in this mock draft because like I always say, when you trade in these mock drafts, if you go down a rabbit hole, what would the conversation be? So I'm going to try to keep it as real as possible. With the first overall pick at the Chicago Bears selecting Caleb Williams, quarterback from, from USC. Phenomenal talent. I think that Caleb Williams can come in. He can be a successful quarterback with this team. If they want to keep Justin Fields, obviously they will move down. But I have them moving off of Justin Fields, resetting your clock with Caleb Williams, going out there and paying guys like Jalen Johnson, and basically resetting this whole thing. The one thing that Chicago Bears missed on a couple of years ago was missing out on Patrick Mahomes. They went with Mr. Trubisky. I think that you look at Caleb Williams right now, I do not think that he's the next Patrick Mahomes, but he has a lot of playmaking ability with the skill set that Falls to the same camp with guys like Aaron Rodgers and with guys like Patrick Mahomes. I think that it's too good to pass up. I have them going with Caleb Williams with the first overall pick. With the second overall pick, the Washington Commanders, they need help across the board. They need offensive line help. Their wide receivers were in the bottom half of the NFL in terms of separation, but they need to go out there and get the right offensive personnel. You have a brand new head coach in Dan Quinn. You also have a brand new offensive coordinator in Cliff Kingsbury. They can go out there. They can build around Sam Howell, but I do not get that's what they want to do. They may move off of Sam Howell, keep Jacoby Brissett around to be the backup quarterback. I have them selecting Jaden Daniels quarterback from LSU. You may say, why not Drake May? Jaden Daniels can come in and he's electrifying. The only player in FBS history to have over 12,000 passing yards with over 3,000 rushing yards as well. Jaden Daniels just won the Heisman Trophy and was one of the best quarterbacks this season in college. 40 passing touchdowns and he had over a thousand yards rushing as well. Phenomenal prospect here and I do think that he can be in the same conversation with guys like Joe Burrow and Josh Allen in the next couple of years. You have an offensive line that allows Sam Howe to be the most sacked and most pressured offensive quarterback in the NFL this season. Jaden Daniels has a playmaking ability to get himself out of the jam and you have the good wide receiving cores there as well with Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dawson, and Curtis Samuel, if you want to bring back Curtis Samuel. With the third overall pick, it's a no-brainer for the New England Patriots. They need wide receiving help. They need offensive line help. You should give Mac Jones another chance, right? That's wrong. Even though Mac Jones did get a raw deal with Bill Belichick, you look at Drake May here. I have them selecting Drake May, quarterback from UNC. I think that Drake May is going to be phenomenal at the next level. A great quarterback that did have a down year this year, but a lot of his NFL talent left. A guy like Josh Downs, who is now playing with the Indianapolis Colts, had a phenomenal connection with Drake May. He can make every pass that you expect for a quarterback to make, and he has the same skill set as guys like Trevor Lawrence and guys like Justin Herbert as well, and you start over with the Patriots with a brand new coaching staff as well, with your brand new head coach and Gerard Mayo. I think you'll be in a very great situation moving forward. With the fourth overall pick, there's on the Cardinals. This is a team that did a lot of good on the back end of the season. You have a brand new head coach, Jonathan Gannon. Last season, he did a lot of good things with this team. Kyler Murray missed a good portion of the season dealing with a torn ACL, and guess what? Kyler Murray did look better in structure with a brand new offense coordinator than he ever did with Cliff Kingsbury. They need wide receiving help. You do have Marquise Hollywood Brown, but going in and getting Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State, great move. I think that he can come in. He can be that guy that's like Larry Fitzgerald. Doesn't have that many knocks in his game. Smooth, polished, great hands, can get open deep down the field, can make plays with the ball in his hand. Just an awesome playmaker, a smooth route runner. You go out there, you build this offense around Kyler Murray and give him another shot as well. You have Marquise Hollywood Brown, you pair him up with Marvin Harrison Jr. And with the speed and the athletic ability of Kyler Murray, you're building a very fun offense as well. And you also have Paris Johnson Jr. at the tackle spot that you selected in last year's draft class as well. The Arizona on the Cardinals would be building something very special if they selected Marvin Harrison Jr. with the fourth overall pick. With the fifth overall pick the Los Angeles Chargers you have a brand new head coach and Jim Harbaugh I love him you have a brand new offensive coordinator in Greg Roman I think he's awesome as well especially with the run game you have to get the run game right with Justin Herbert Justin Herbert is an all-world quarterback and they need offensive line help as well you did select Quentin Johnson in the first round last year in the draft he wasn't that huge hit he had a lot of major drops and he had some mental lapses as well hopefully he can develop you have Keenan Allen still on this roster you have Mike Williams as well as I'm recording this video they need more offensive help would they want to bring back a guy like Austin Eckler we will see but the last time Jim Harbaugh was in the NFL he had a great tight end in Vernon Davis I have no selecting Brock Bowers here they can go Joe Alt with the tackle from Notre Dame 
But Brock Bowers can come in. He can play inside the slot, outside the slot. He can play the X, Y receiver. I have seen this kid do phenomenal things at that Georgia level. And you pair him up with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, and hopefully Quentin Johnson can develop as well. You're putting pieces around Justin Herbert. Amazing situation. And that's one thing that you can look at in this draft. I can see them going off this line as well. But to go out there and get this true tight end that can block in space, you could be looking at another guy that could come in and that can take over this division. The same way that Travis Kelsey has taken over this division for the last couple of years with Patrick Mahomes. You're setting up Justin Herbert with elite weapons on the perimeter. With the sixth overall pick, the New York Giants, they do need quarterback help. Daniel Jones missed majority of this season dealing with a torn ACL, and he didn't look good throughout the entire season when he did play. The one good moment he did have was in the back half against the Arizona Cardinals where he pulled them from losing that game in the back half of it, in the second half. So with that being said, they're going to have to go out there and get some more wide receiving help because regardless of the way you look at it, Daniel Jones is going to be on the roster next season because you paid him. You have Saquon Barkley that you have yet to resign right now. As I record this video, you can franchise tag him. We will see. Darius Slayton, solid wide receiver. You have Darren Waller at the tight end spot. He's a solid tight end. Go out there and get Malik Neighbors. Build up this team around Daniel Jones and get him more help on the perimeter. You can be in a great situation. He's a guy that was an awesome deep threat at LSU. Has a similar skill set to a guy like Jamar Chase, and I think that he will fit in very nicely with the New York Giants. With the seventh overall pick, the Tennessee Titans, you need help at the offensive line spot. You selected Peter Skaronsky last season. He was the best. Offense lineman on the team this season. You need tackle help. Have them going Joe Alt. Tackle from Notre Dame. A complete game changer. A stonewall tackle. Can move in space. Is an elite prospect. He reminds me a lot of Quinn Nelson. Even though Quinn Nelson is an interior offensive lineman, this guy right here is a perfect tackle. Has the ideal size. Has the ideal quickness to deal with those speed edge rushers. And you want to give Will Levers more help. I know that you need wide receiving help. You have DeAndre Hopkins. Traylon Burks hasn't been able to break out just yet. But go out there and get some more offensive line help for Will Levis. He can get those guys open and he can make some elite level throws as well. With the eighth overall pick, the Atlanta Falcons can go a lot of places here. You need an edge rusher. Right? This is a team that hasn't had a true edge rusher since Vic Beasley a couple of years ago. But I look at this Atlanta Falcons team. You've passed on quarterbacks over and over again to get guys like B. John Robinson, to get guys like Kyle Pitts, to get guys like Drake London. You can't continue to pass up on quarterbacks. I can see this team moving up to get a quarterback. The problem is the top three teams, they desperately need a quarterback. I have this team selecting J.J. McCarthy, quarterback out of Michigan. I know the first thing a lot of people say, that's a reach. No, it's not. He was very good at Michigan, had 22 passing touchdowns to four interceptions this season. They ran the football very well. He wasn't asked to do much. Guess what the Atlanta Falcons can do with Tyler Algier and B. John Robinson? They can run the football very well. And they had a top-end defense this season as well with their passing defense. You can go out there and get an edge rusher in the second or third round, or you can go out there and resign Bud Dupree and go back and just do what you need to do and terms of getting things right on the defensive end with bringing down the quarterback i think you bring in jj mccarthy with the elite weapons that you have with kyle pitts with guys like drake london and b john robinson you put him in a very good situation with this offensive line he can be amazing with this team and it all depends on will this team go out there and get russell wilson or not when he eventually gets cut by the denver broncos with the ninth overall pick the chicago bears have their second first round pick the reason why they had the number one overall pick is because they made that trade with the Carolina Panthers so they can bounce up and get Bryce Young. So this is their own first round pick. They need wide receiving help. You do have DJ Moore. I do like Darnell Mooney. Just a couple of years ago, he had over a thousand yards receiving. This season, he struggled with a lot of injuries. And you do have Cole Command as well, who was very good and was a very good for sure handed tight end. Having to go on Roma Dunze, wide receiver from Washington was Michael Pennis Jr.'s best friend on the field. Smooth, reminds me a lot of DeAndre Hopkins, and can take the top off the defense as well. You have him with Darnell Mooney in the slot with DJ Moore, with Caleb Williams. You're shaping up a very good offense with this team moving forward. In this division, with teams like the Green Bay Packers and teams like the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions, you put the Bears right back in that fold, and I like their building right now. With the 10th overall pick, this right here is a no-brainer. The New York Jets cannot move up to go get Joe Alt, but they can get Ole Fashanu, 
tackle from Penn State, a big, burly tackle, perfect in the run game, perfect in the pass game. If it was not for Joe Alt, I would say that he's the best tackle in this class. Phenomenal, can get out in the space and just can make those big body moves as well. You need to get some protectors up front for Aaron Rodgers. How did Aaron Rodgers tear his Achilles? Because he did not have offensive line protection. You go out there and get this big tackle, amazing situation moving forward. With the 11th overall pick, it's a no-brainer for the Minnesota Vikings. They played very good defense, mostly because of Brian Flores, but they need defensive help. There's a big question mark right now with their edge rusher. Will they bring back their best edge rusher or not into Neil Hunter, a guy that led this team in sacks? But even if you do bring him back, you're going to have a lot of cap concern moving forward. You have to go Dallas Turner here. Edge rusher from Alabama can go out there, can stop the run, can go out there and, pa- and rush the pass as well. He can do everything for you. He's a complete pay- playmaker. Go out there and do what you have to do. Select him. You have two bookend defensive ends right now. Great situation. With the 12th overall pick, the Denver Broncos seem like they're going to go out there and that they are going to cut Russell Wilson. If that's the case, who is your quarterback going to be moving forward? Are you going to bring in a guy like a Jameis Winston? Well, Jameis Winston is going to be a long-term starter. I have them selecting Bo Nix, quarterback from Oregon. Now, this can be a reach, but I think this is the quarterback that Sean Payne will want to mold moving forward. A guy that is great at the line of scrimmage, has played 51 games in college, was great at Oregon, did not have the greatest career at Auburn, but he did a lot of good things in in Oregon with that system. He'll be in a similar situation with the Denver Broncos with guys like Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy. You're resetting the Denver Broncos clock with the offensive end. You get the quarterback that Sean Payton wants and you just rebuild it from here. This is a reach for me, but I don't see another way that the Denver Broncos go without going out there and selecting the quarterback and especially a guy that seems like he fits with Sean Payton once at this spot. With the 13th overall pick, the Las Vegas Raiders, they need quarterback help. I want to go Michael Penis Jr. right here, but I think that's too rich for Michael Penis Jr. Some people are down on him because of his injury history. We will see. I can see the Raiders taking him here with this spot. But I have them going tackle. Tali C. Fuaga, tackle from Oregon State. Very good in pass protecting. His run blocking is a bit iffy, but you want to go out there and get some big offensive lineman to help out your quarterback whether that is a no conno for the long term or not this team definitely needs offensive line help and it starts in the trenches with their offense their offense did not look good this season yes they fired Josh Daniels and Dave Ziegler so on the back half of the season they went five and four with Antonio Pierce but at the same time the offensive line protection was not up to par and you need to give the quarterback more time you can go Michael Penis Jr. in the second round or you can trade back up in the first round and get him we will see but it makes too much sense to not go up there and get a tackle with this spot with the 14th overall pick, it's a no-brainer for the New Orleans Saints. I have them going J.C. Latham at the tackle spot from Alabama. They selected Trevor Penning a couple of years ago. He was terrible. He hasn't worked out with this team. Maybe he can be better at the interior lineman spot. Too many penalties. He dealt with some injuries his rookie season. He had a broken foot. He just hasn't caught on. A guy like J.C. Latham can come in and do some big things with you from Bama. Can go out there and help out Derek Carr. Derek Carr got beat up a lot this season. And a lot of it was because the offensive line was not good enough. And they could not run the football either because the offensive line was not good enough. So go out there and get more offensive line help with this team. With the 15th overall pick, the Indianapolis Colts, this team needs secondary help. You know, you do have some good players in the secondary like Juju Brents, but can he stay healthy enough with this team? Going out there and getting a guy like Nate Wiggins from Clemson, a glue type of corner that can stick to wide receivers. They can play inside the slot, outside the slot. It makes too much sense for this team. And this is an Indianapolis Colts team that's going to be in a very good situation moving forward. You have Anthony Richardson. Will you resign Michael Pittman Jr.? It seems like that they will. And you also have Josh Downs as well. And you have some solid tight ends with this team. But you need to go out there and you need to work on that defense. The Indianapolis Colts can be a force to be reckoned with in that division. They were just one down away from possibly going into the NFL playoffs this year before they lost against the Houston Texans. With the 16th overall pick, the Seahawks Seahawks are heading into a good direction, in my opinion. You let Pete Carroll go. He's now in the front office with the team. You're going with a younger version of him and Mike McDonald. What is one thing that Mike McDonald has seen over the last couple of years in his career? He was a former defensive coordinator for Michigan. So he went out there and he saw how that defense was built. They built their edges. It makes no sense to not go out there and just get a guy like Jared Verse, defensive end from Florida State University. He's a big 
pass rusher that can stop the run and it's something that the Seattle Seahawks need to go out there and do. The Seattle Seahawks defense in the last couple of years has not been consistent enough with stopping the run. You do have Bobby Wagner and you still do have Jordan Brooks who is the better of the two and the linebacking spot. So the linebackers are good enough in my opinion. You look at a guy like Jamal Adams, he's not a good safety right now. He can't stay healthy. He can't stay consistent. But the with, with the guys that they have on the back end, with a Tariq Woolen, he's very good. I also like Devin Witherspoon as well. So go out there and draft another defender in Jared Verse. He can get to the quarterback. He can stop the run. You build the edges of this defense. Amazing situation. And remember this. Mike McDonald just went out there and he just led the Boston Ravens to be the best defense in the NFL this season. With the 17th overall pick, you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars. They do need offensive line help. And you want to go out there and you want to help out Trevor Lawrence as much as possible. But it was one glaring weakness with their defense. You have Trayvon Walker. You also have Josh Allen as well. Josh Allen was phenomenal this season. And I love him from Trayvon Walker. He can walk down the passer. He can stop the run. Why not go out there and get Byron Murphy, the third defensive tackle from Texas, the big defensive tackle, a guy that can come in there, stop the run, get to the passer, make this defense even better. You will have a brand new defensive coordinator this season. Yes, you need secondary help, but I think Tyson Campbell will have a bounce back year next year next season and I do think that you also have another good corner in Darius Williams as well you do want to go out there and help Trevor Lawrence you can do that in frenzy get some more wide receiving help go out there and get some more offensive line help as well but go out there and select that defensive tackle with those two bookend pass rushers it makes a freakish defense and it makes a freakish defensive line as well with the 18th overall pick the Cincinnati Bengals do need offensive line help but I can see them Fixing that in free agency. You just franchised Tad T. Higgins. This is a defense that was terrible last season against stopping the pass. They could not go out there and they could not stop the pass with their secondary. Now, their front seven is very good. Trey Hendrickson is phenomenal. And I like DJ Reader. I like BJ Hill as well. But you need secondary help. I have them selecting Tarion Arnold, cornerback from Alabama. Reminds me a lot of Trayvon Diggs. I think that he's a very good cornerback. He's sound. He's technical. He can go out there. He can stick with the star wide receivers in this division because you're going to have to go against guys like Zay Jones, guys like George Pickens. Go out there and get a physical cornerback that can match up with those guys and help out that defense. With the 19th overall pick out of the Los Angeles Rams selecting Liatu Latu, edge rusher from USC. The reason why I have them selecting this guy right here, Liatu Latu, first of all, he's in California. He don't have to travel too far. You have Kobe Turner, who led all rookies in sacks. He played at the defensive tackle spot. You still have Aaron Donald. You need edge rushing help. Go out there, get another edge rusher to pair it with that defense. You will be in a phenomenal situation. This is a team that was just a couple plays away from defeating the Detroit Lions. And what a lot of people thought would be a rebuilding year for the Rams. You go out there and you get a star edge rusher with this team. All bets are off. And we remember what happened the last time they had a star edge rusher in Von Miller. And I'm not calling Liatu Latu the next Von Miller. They won the Super Bowl. So you go out there and give this kid a lot of one-on-one opportunities. And that division against Kyler Murray. And that division against Geno Smith. That division against Brock Purdy. You need more edge rushing help. I think this guy can come in. He can solve that problem. With the 20th overall pick, the Steelers need a quarterback, man. Will they go out there? Will they talk to Russell Wilson? Will they trade for Justin Fields? We will see. I do want to go Michael Penis Jr. here. I really want to. I think Michael Penis Jr. can come in and he can make the Steelers a very tough team to beat moving forward. But I don't have them doing that. They need secondary help. They need offensive line help as well. You just cut Mason Cole. Just made a lot of. You just made a lot of. Harsh deals over the last couple of weeks with cutting Mr. Trubisky, but it had to be done to save money. You cut Big Chucks as well, who's your offensive lineman. I have them going Kool-Aid McKentry, cornerback from Alabama. And you may say, why? They have Joy Porter Jr. Did you not see Patrick Peterson at the cornerback position? Patrick Peterson did not look good. Brandon Ayuk ate him up. You also had the Cincinnati Bengals wide receivers. They ate him up as well. And the same thing with the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers as well. They're getting past him. He's solid at the safety spot, but he's not the same cornerback. Go out there and get Kool-Aid McKinstry. You can say that he's a developmental corner. The same with Joy Porter Jr. Joy Porter Jr. did look better for the last five or six games of the season. The only thing that you worry about with him is the holding penalties. That's it. He got better at that on the back half of the season. You do have a very good playmaker at the safety spot and Mika Fitzpatrick. You put Kool-Aid McKinstry with Joe Purdy Jr. You're building up a very good Steelers defense that already has Alice Highsmith and TJ Watt. So I have them going Kool-Aid McKinstry with the 20th, 20th overall pick. With the 21st overall pick at the Miami Dolphins selecting Jackson Powers Johnson, interior lineman from Oregon. 
Why do I call him interior lineman? He's played left guard. He's played right guard. He's played center. Now, he's at his best when he's at center. The Miami Dolphins need offensive line help. Tua Tungvaloa is a very good quarterback with his team. You have Tyreek Hill. You have Jalen Waddle. Continue to build through those trenches and help out Tua Tungvaloa. Tua's at his best when the offensive line is giving him the most time as possible. And you can take more deep shots down the field when you give him more time in the pocket. Do this with, ja- with Jackson's power, Jackson Powers Johnson, and you'll be amazing. With the 22nd overall pick, it's no-brainer for the Philadelphia Eagles. Go with Quinion Mitchell, quarterback from Toledo. And the reason why I say that they need to go out there and get cornerback help, Darius Slay cannot stay healthy this season. James Bradbury was burnt toast. You go out there, you bring in this kid, he can stick to guys like glue. He's very fast. He's very twitchy in the hips. You're getting a very good cornerback that is pro-ready right now and can come in and he can help out the Philadelphia Eagles win immediately. And that was his Achilles heel for the Philadelphia Eagles this season. With the 23rd overall pick, the Houston Texans can go wide receiver here. But you do have Nico Collins, who's very good. You also have Tank Dale, who's very good as well. I think that they're going to go out there and they're going to go select Johnny Newton, defensive tackle from Illinois. Go out there and get more defensive help. You have Will Anderson. You have Steven Nelson, who was solid at the cornerback position. You also have Derek Stingley Jr., who was great this season as well, when he was able to fully play because he missed a couple of games this season due to a hamstring injury. Go get Johnny Newton, a guy that can sit across from guys like Jonathan Grenard, who led this team in sacks, from a guy like Will Anderson. You put him in the middle of, the, of that defense, he can stop the run of the Indianapolis Colts. He can, also, he can also push the pocket as well. With the 24th overall pick, the Dallas Cowboys have them selecting Armarius Mims, tackle from Georgia. Tyron Smith isn't getting any younger. Tyron Smith is still a solid tackle to have on your team. And the offensive line does need work because they're getting older. But I look at Terrence Steele. Against higher level competition, he isn't as good. A couple of years ago, he suffered a torn ACL. He hasn't been the same. Go select. Our Marius Mims, tackle from Georgia, can come in, can be a very good run blocking tackle for you and can be very good in pass protecting as well. With the 25th overall pick, the Green Bay Packers can go wide receiver here, but they have good wide receivers. They just have to stay healthy. And Jordan Love proved that he could be a top quarterback in the NFL. This team needs defensive help. You did fire, you did go out there and you did fire your defensive coordinator. You're bringing in a brand new defensive coordinator. D. John Cooper is here. Cornerback from Iowa. He can play safety. He can play cornerback. Just a true playmaker with the team. This team may move off of Jair Alexander. They may keep Jair Alexander. But regardless, I think you need to go out there and select this kid. You have him. You have Eric Stokes. And if you have Jair, Jair Alexander, that's even better. Build up that Packers defense on the back end. And the Green Bay Packers could honestly win that division next season if people aren't careful. I know people are higher on the Detroit Lions right now. You make that defense better than what it is. You'd be in an amazing situation. Jordan Love is just second in the league in passing touchdowns as well. With the 26th overall pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just cut Shaquille Barrett. They do need pass rushing help. You have Vita Vea. You have Kalaja Kansi as well. I like those two guys. But what's the one thing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cannot do this season? They could not go out there and they could not stop wide receivers. With that being said, I have them going Ennis Rickershaw. Junior, cornerback from from Missouri. Big, long, lanky corner can do very good in man coverage. And what what is one thing that Ty Bowles loves to do? He loves to run a lot of man coverage and those zero blisses. Go out there, select this kid, and put him across side. Guys like Jamel Dean, you'll be in a great situation moving forward in that secondary. And Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be a sneaky team to look out for in that division long term. With the 27th overall pick, this is the pick that the Arizona Cardinals got. From last year when the Houston Texans traded up to go get Will Anderson. I have them selecting Troy Foote now. Offensive tackle from Washington. You need to get more offensive line help. You do have Paris Johnson Jr. who did have a lot of struggles last season. Hopefully he can be better with Kyler Murray moving forward. You bring in Troy Foote now. He could come in, play at the tackle spot, can play at the guard spot. Just a very versatile offensive lineman. Could come in. He can help out Kyler Murray as much as possible. And, can, and you can continue to run the football with a guy like James Conner. With the 28th overall pick, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from LSU. Gabe Davis is not a horrible wide receiver, but he hasn't been that game changer that they were looking for. He has a lot of mental lapses. He has a lot of mental drops. You selected Dalton Kincaid last year in the first round. You also went out there. You also have Dawson Knox. You have Stephon Diggs. Now, Stephon Diggs may want to be traded. We will see. Anything is possible. 
But getting Brian Thomas Jr. right here, it's a very good wide receiver, can go out there, can play inside the slot, outside the slot, is a big body wide receiver, can take the top off the defense, and it's something that the Buffalo Bills need. And it's more consistency and it's more weapons to go out there and beat guys like Patrick Mahomes, go out there and beat guys like Joe. With the 29th overall pick after the Detroit Lions selecting Tavondre Sweat, defensive tackle from Texas. And you may say, why a defensive tackle here? Why not, not another pass rusher, a guy like a Chop Robinson? The Detroit Lions have James Houston, who was very good a year ago. I understand this year he didn't have those many snaps on the field. The production was low. But the thing is with James Houston, besides those injuries, just a year before he was very good to get into the quarterback. You have Aiden Hudson, who is one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. You also have a secondary that does need work by like Brian Branch a lot. He's a very good cornerback with this team he's a very good safety as well he's a dual threat guy in that backfield in terms of just getting things right on the back end of that defense at the safety spot at the cornerback spot Cameron Sutton is a solid veteran he's not a true number one corner and to be real with you he's not a true number two either but he has some good moments here and there you can get a cornerback through fragency you can get another guy in the NFL draft as well later on but getting a defensive tackle here would not only help out Aiden Hudson it'll also help out James Houston it'll help out the rest of the defense as well a guy they can come in, stop the run, and get to the quarterback as well in the middle of your defense. With the 30th overall pick, the Boston Ravens, they need more wide receiving help. They did have Marquise Hollywood Brown a couple of years ago. They traded him away. He had a lot of drops to the scene. You selected Zay Flowers last year. You brought in Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham did not look the same with this team. You need to get a true young replacement there. You have Zay Flowers who can take a who could take the top off the defense. You have Isaiah Likely, who's a very good tight end with this team. The same with Mark Andrews. Go out there and get Troy Franklin. A big body wide receiver from Oregon can take the top off the defense, has smooth hands. He is more so known. Unlike Brian Thomas Jr., he is more so known for just taking the top off the defense and just running past people. That's what he's known for. He's big, he's long, he's lanky, and he's a type of wide receiver that Lamar Jackson would love. He can also go out there and do some damage as well with bodying up cornerbacks on the sideline as well. So go out there and select Troy Franklin. With the 31st overall pick, the San Francisco 49ers, they need offensive line help. Part of the reason why they lost against the Kansas City Chiefs, no one could block Chris Jones. No one could block George Karloftis. They need offensive line help, even against the Green Bay Packers, even against the Detroit Lions. They were getting to Brock Purdy over and over again. Go out there, get another offensive line with this team. Let's go with Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. I think he can come in. He can do a lot of good things this team. You put him alongside Trip Williams, who is getting older, but you need more offensive line help. He could play some guard, but he is known for being a tackle. Put him at the tackle spot with this team, and I think you can be in a very good situation with him, Christian McCaffrey, Brock Purdy, and that entire juggernaut that you have on that offensive end. And with the last pick in the first round, I have the Kansas City Chiefs selecting a Donnie Mitchell, wide receiver from Texas. They need wide receiving help. You have Rasheed Rice, who was phenomenal last season. Travis Kelsey is still Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends in the NFL that we've ever seen, but they need to go out there and get some wide receiving help. Kadarius Tony can't catch anything. He's a walking vaccine. He can't catch anything. He's terrible. Sky Moore has not developed to that next level just yet. So getting a guy like a Donnie Mitchell will fit the system with Patrick Mahomes. And he would deal with a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage because of the attention that Rasheed Rice and also Travis Kelsey would deal with with Isaiah Pacheco as well, that running back spot. So let me know what you guys think about this first round mock draft. Like I said, there's no trades going on in this mock draft. Trades will happen in the real NFL draft, but just let me know how you grade this draft. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, each and every last one, guys, stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Peace.